Hi everyone, I'd like to give some uh, business advice to anyone that is looking for uh, some advice or opinions on what to do with your business um, when the coronavirus outbreak is currently taking place. Uh, and this is really based around not to do with health, whether or not you should be washing your hands or sneezing on your, uh, on your friend next door, whether we've got the walking dead coming because you can read the Daily Mail of the Sun and they will tell you that uh, the world is ending. But I personally, as a business owner, forget anything else that we want to talk about, whether what's in the news. I've been through everything that you can imagine from the 2008 crash uh, to Ebola to uh, Corona to, I don't know, the world war nearly breaking out a few months ago. I've been through pretty much everything, the Arab Spring. Um, so from my point of view, if you're a business owner or, or entrepreneur is uh, you know self-employed what i think the first thing to do is take into account is to carry on business as normal because life does continue uh, life does carry on people still need with you in property to buy a house or live in a house or rent a house and people need to buy a car or they need to buy bonds or shares and they need to invest their money that doesn't stop it's just the type of client that you're dealing with may ask a few more questions about what's going on so I'm going to share some tips with you in terms of what we have done as a business and what I've done as an individual and with my directors that are going to safeguard our business's future capital uh, and what we're doing with the whole public PR piece that's being done at the moment on um, the coronavirus. And again, I don't mean that it is a PR piece. I mean that there's a lot of people talking different opinions and people are very quick to eat up negative news and not the positive. So. Let me go through with you what we're doing. So I've wrote a few points down here to go with you. So first of all, any business, including all and all shops, you've agreed sales, you've agreed transactions last week, last month, wherever it may be, two months ago, and they're pending to complete. What we're doing at the moment is we're making sure we are looking at planning and educating our clients, i.e. we may have clients in Italy which are currently going through um, a, uh, you know, a cease of traveling for the next few weeks. Uh, we may have clients in Iran or Saudi Arabia that are flying in uh, and that's not an issue. It doesn't stop a transaction happening. It doesn't come under force majeure to my knowledge. Um, so what you would need to do with these clients is educate your previous, the previous contracts that you've got and give people the advice they need. So it may be at the moment if they're coming into Dubai that they need to come in a little bit earlier to make sure that their city or country isn't put under quarantine and put in their sale under jeopardy. Um, so making sure that all the agreed sales you've previously got, you map out who they are, where they're from, what country they're from, and then the ones that are in, in, in risk of potentially wobbling because of this situation, going and speaking to them and educating them, not to do with um, the virus, to do with the travel disruption it's going to cause to make sure they are here. Um, and I think a lot of clients do appreciate your education point of view. Next thing I've got here is to review the contracts that you have in place moving forward, uh, meaning that we have uh, sales that we may do today, tomorrow, or in a week. Uh, these contracts, from our point of view, are going to be different now compared to uh, what was one month ago or two months ago, because I know there's going to be, which is the major thing, travel disruption. So we have a cash buyer and a cash seller. In January or December, that would be a 30-day contract. We've now made the decision to make that 60 day contract on or before, meaning if we do it in a day, brilliant, but we're giving our clients a little bit of leeway in the event there's a disruption. There's also an extension in our contract, which was 45 days in the event that there is a problem with a contract. We've now amended that to 90 days. Um, and the reason we've done that is nothing to do with whether I think there's going to be a big outbreak or anything of any sort, is I know categorically certain cities at the moment being told not to fly, businesses are being told you are not allowed to fly if you work for Facebook or HSBC, whoever it may be, that there's certain things you can and can't do in these larger companies at the moment. So making sure that you take in and giving your clients that little bit of breathing room will help to make sure that your contract of sale doesn't fall through. Now, if you're a business owner or an employee, one big factor to take into consideration that I've always done in these scenarios, whether it's going back to 2008 or any other scenario, is cash flow management. So cash flow is king. That could be on a personal level or that can be on a business level. So on a personal level, right now, you probably shouldn't be buying that Rolex or then pair of shoes and 500 pound pair of shoes or that holiday that you want to go on, but you know at the moment that maybe it's a bit ropey. Ensuring that you have mapped, you have got put together a plan for your next 30 days, your next 60 days and your next 90 days. That in the event 
the Walking Dead does happen, you are ready. You have your funds ready to make sure that you know you have your money for your next three months to pay your salaries and your bills. And if you can't stretch your three months, make sure that you've got two months. If you haven't got two months, make sure you've got a month. But make sure that at the end of the month, you don't just go, oh my God, where's my money? And you know, how do I get that money? Ensuring that you are pre having a preventative plan in place at the moment, knowing that probably nothing will go wrong, but this is what I've always done in these situations, ensuring that I have, uh, you know, as a startup business, the salaries for the staff and the, the wages. And that may come down to, when we're talking about cash flow management, making sure that, you know, if you're a business owner, you're not taking dividends until uh, you're in a clear space. Whether that is as a business owner, you know, you lower your basic salary or uh, anything of any sorts to ensure that you are keeping your cash flow as limited as it can be. Little tips for you, if you know, if you are struggling with cash flows, pick up the phone to your landlord and explain the situation with the economy. Because I know that in food and beverage, and I know that in travel, definitely, there's going to be and is going to be a major disruption. And that's the only thing that I want to talk about, how you navigate the waters of disruption in your industry. Um, and if you are in FMB or anywhere else, I think there'll be a lot of sympathy for, uh, for you and your landlord and even your marketing companies to, you know, maybe put a stop in place. But one thing, uh, whether that's marketing, whether that is your, uh, your rent, whether that is anything except the staff wages, obviously, because that they have to be paid from our point of view. Um, but making sure that you put them in place is massive. Now, one thing that I would say to anyone, again, someone that's navigated these waters, do not um, cut your marketing budget down to a point of where your business stops because what's an important message for me to pass across is the world doesn't stop. In all these things that have happened that I've been involved in, the world has never stopped. Transactions happen in any industry. People would have said in 2008, when we talk about Dubai, which had the biggest uh, you know, implosion that I've ever seen in, in real estate history since being involved. We were doing so many sales in 2008 because there is always a market. Even if the market is down at the moment, let's say the stock market, I can guarantee you now, someone that's very clever, and that's not me in this market, would have invested in sanitizer companies, would have invested in pharmaceutical companies that are going to create the cure for this. And people that are very clever will know that sterling is going to drop or the US dollar's gonna go, and they will know this is going to happen, and they will invest into this. So, um, ensuring from my point of view that your marketing budget doesn't stop is massive because the world doesn't stop. That should be the last thing that any business should cut. Um, last thing I've got on here to, to pick up that I am involved in heavily, and I'll always say, you have to adapt in the market you're in. Now, your market might not change at all, Real estate probably won't change that much from my point of view um, because people are trading and people that are buying in Dubai from my markets are people that live in Dubai. So, you know, at 75, 80% of our business, people that are selling and upgrading and downgrading, doing the thing. Um, but if you're in a market where, again, we're using food and beverage, an example, or travel, it's ensuring that your business doesn't stop. And maybe you have to adapt. Maybe that has changed your business plan, your business model in the short term. So to give you a perfect example, that in 2009, people weren't really buying and selling houses. They were trading something called credit notes, which was developer owed clients money. And what they would do is they would give them a credit note and say, you are, we owe you this much money, but we're not going to give it back in cash. We'll give it to the value of, a, uh, of another property. We were trading these from a buyer that had a future payment to give that money, and they were trading it at below market value. So there's always a market, no matter what market you're in. Your job is to figure out as a business owner, what can you do to navigate these waters? Um, I really hope some of these things do come in handy because it's, from my point of view, it's not a panic. I'm not sitting here going, oh my God, but I know a lot of people have read uh, the news and they do eat up the negative news. It's like anything, you'll never hear your friends talk about the positives or the news will never talk about the positives. The news never goes, oh, congratulations, person won the lottery today and he's had a great day and been promoted. It'll talk about death, divorce, death and everything else. They don't want to talk about the positives. So my message to everyone is your business owner, navigate the market you're in, adapt in what we're involved in, and make sure that you are making provisions with your business. Hope this comes in handy. If you want to inbox me any questions, feel free to do it, um, and I will, I'll get back to it whenever I can, um, and I'll make sure that I give you the best advice I can. But honestly, from my point of view as a business owner, we continue as normal, we continue to do our job, because the world doesn't stop. Thank you, guys. Bye.